Spider-Man. It's it's just called Spider-Man. I haven't played enough of the penultimate Spider-Man to give a fair review, so instead I'm discussing the 2000 release for PS1 and some other consoles. This focuses on the aftermath of Spider-Man discovering an imposter. Someone who dresses like, and claims to be, him. Flash forward to 2018, and Tobey Maguire knows what that's like twofold. This game is relentlessly energetic with enjoyable, understandable combat, amusing and succinct dialogue, and charmingly engrossing introductions from Stan Lee that wholly respect the comic book origins of Spidey. No, not Stan Lee Kubrick. Stan Lee. Man, Kubrick would have made this a very different game. The voice acting is enjoyable, with all performers being well suited to their roles. Venom is reinvented as a much more comical and redeemable figure, with traits of his lethal protector counterpart. He's given more dimension than the forcefully dark, almost bland character seen elsewhere. In outdoor level, Spider-Man is incapable of reaching the ground because of a poisonous gas that was leaked onto the city. Clever plot point. Excuse for graphic limitations. You be the judge. The answer is definitely both. There's a strong sense of place, courtesy of numerous scenery changes, like side of building, slightly different side of building, the possibilities are endless, the correct amount of challenges offered, and players are never confused about their objectives. There's a commendable array of villains, exciting boss battles, and other experimental encounters. Enemies include Scorpion, whose boss fight allows the player to utilise their interactive environment, but may come with the side effect of throwing chairs any time you enter an office. I've been fired from a lot of jobs. Doc Ock's boss fight relies on timing and coordination, and Rhino's boss fight relies on sometimes getting out of the way a bit. As well as the array of villains, there are entertaining cameos from Marvel heroes who never outstay their welcome. These include Daredevil, the Human Torch, the Punisher, and Captain America, who, as you can tell from his film appearances, has smartened himself up a lot since this game. Visual humour is used sparingly and to please in effect, and there are exciting chase sequences that arrive to add a welcome variation to the nature of play. The one major issue is the graphics, which are pretty unattractive. I know the game is old. But even Queen Victoria went on record to say that the graphics seemed dated. She she didn't. Don't Google that. Don't worry, I knew you weren't going to Google that. Only a fool would. <laughs> it's, I, I did. Another issue comes from Spidey's moves being slightly limited, in spite of how enjoyable the combat is. This isn't really a major problem and is only really noticeable since we know him to be acrobatic. This is a seriously enjoyable game that deserves a remaster to fix the graphics issues. My score would be a respectable 7.5 out of 10. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, he does things that are comparable to what a spider is capable of doing. I think those are the right lyrics.